we're going to use our fuse jump wire. The two red wires, uh, are, one of them is supposed to be fed by a fusible link. They come to this relay, they hook together in one terminal, and then they go out from there. One of them goes to the auto shutdown relay, the other one goes to the PCM. So essentially, we have no power to the PCM. I'm going to send power down that wire, down a little red wire. We probably should verify that that is true. Um, let's see here. We could probably tell by tapping the auto shut. Oh shoot, we're hooking battery positive. Are you in there, old girl? We're gonna check the control wire again. Um, turn the key on, Vanessa. Okay, shut it off. So we should have a two second prime here, or three seconds, whatever. Turn the key on. Okay, and we do, we have our prime. So, Vanessa, is the key on? No. Um, just a second here. I'm just trying to twist our control wires together. Go ahead and turn the key on. Do you see any lights on the dash, any red lights? Yeah. Are they still on? Yeah. Oh. How about now? How about now? Check oh, okay, they came back on. Just to check in. Oh, okay, okay. So, folks, what were what happened here? What probably the original problem is is we've lost power to one of these red wires from a fusible link. So that's why this relay doesn't work. The other reason the truck doesn't run is because the fuel pump doesn't work. So when we jump power directly to the fuel pump, it doesn't work. But when we jump power to uh, the red wire that which goes to the single board engine controller goes to the auto shutdown relay that all works so we can fix all of this we can put this together but ultimately we need to find out where the fusible link is blown or where its power comes from and then we need to figure out why the fuel pump still doesn't work when we put power to it so we we have two problems here in this one area uh, so let me track down this fusible link let's see where it lives it says it's a white one there's one here I don't know if this one is it. We're gonna have to open up this uh, mess here and see, I see a couple fusible links that are white. You can go ahead and shut the key off, Vanessa. Um, which I assume they probably ultimately start, you know, down through here. Uh, but we'll figure this out, folks, rest assured. We'll see who goes where and all that stuff. And stand by. All right, so this is quite a mess back here. A lot of things have been cutting us some kind of vampire connector to add on something. <laughs> so anyhow, according to the diagram here, uh, we have those fusible links is what we're looking for. And it says out off the battery, it comes out with a black cable, which is this cable right here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's the black main battery cable that comes down into this split of fusible links. And it says here, I'm just trying to follow diagrams, you know, best we can, black and red. Okay, so there's our black, there's our red, and then it splits off. We got one, two, three, four, we got five fusible links there. On the diagram, we have one, two, three, four, five fusible links. Uh, ultimately, we're trying to get to the white one, which powers these one of these red ones. So it comes down black fuse or black battery cable goes into here. Uh, out of here, it should be one of the orange fusible links. How many orange ones do we have? According to the diagram, we have two. So what do we have here? We have two. This orange one here. And this orange one here, we have two orange fusible links. And then one of those orange fusible links is supposed to go and it splits off to a red wire. Let me just make sure I'm reading this right. Yeah, one of them splits off from an orange fusible link turns into a red wire and the other one goes to a pink and brown. Um, there we go. Oh, I see some pus on this wire right here. This 
this one's not the right wire color but this wire is this wire is junk it's all uh, this wires this wire right here is no good I don't know if you guys can see it but it's it's all just green and pussy let's take our test light without getting too uh, complicated here I've got it hooked to battery uh, negative so let's see if there's any power in here let's see if there's any power through the pus it's got giant poke holes in it already <laughs> so don't don't yell at me I'm just poking in the green pussy stuff let me just poke a little downstream of the green pussy stuff yeah so even though it's full of corrosion it still flows current it does have to be fixed it's a problem it's not our problem but it is really swole and really green but still carrying current for whatever reason <laughs> this other pink one goes down to an all red wire I'm just gonna poke in the butt connectors here see if I can get in there We've got a t-pin with us we do let's just get in the back I don't think I'm getting down in there far enough okay so we have power on that side of it let's see if we have power coming out of the crimp connector here we do okay let me keep uh, poking along here folks I got to try to find the correct wires uh, the colors aren't matching uh, but like I say with old diagrams I'm not super surprised I do think it's going to be beneficial for us to find out which relay this is perhaps maybe I don't want to get on too many rabbit trails I just want to find the right wires and what feeds back to our white fusible link which ultimately ends to this so let me poke along here and I'll show you guys what I find when I find it our test light took the battery negative anything we touch that is positive will light up this is the wire that we're looking to get lit up we talked about these fusible links this is an orange fusible link this is the other one this one comes out and goes down to a very corroded puffy wire which we determined still carries current but it's not the right color but then we run into this little rigmarole and from orange it was supposed to turn into a white fusible link and then split off to two wires a red wire and then another red wire i believe one went to the ignition switch and the other went to our relays auto shutdown um, when i look here yes it splits off to two red wires it doesn't give me the gauge size it says one of them goes to the ignition switch and then one of them goes to the fuel pump auto shutdown relay so i follow this orange one out goes to this mess goes to a big red wire here and then goes to a little red wire here when i check this little red wire we have no power on it if i wiggle this mess around here sometimes oh there we go so that's lit up now okay and guess what that is too and if i wiggle it it goes out so this is why she has an intermittent starting problem all of this mess this needs to go and that's what we're seeing however even once that's fixed the dang truck still won't run because we don't have what well, we have power going to the fuel pump we just don't have a fuel pump so I'm gonna fix this where the white fusible link is uh, supposed to be and then these two wires the wires that feed off from this this is uh, pretty interesting I haven't messed with fusible links in a really long time a really long time so let me do what I have to do I assume this other big red wire um, has you know it must have full-time power on it or has power on it the our connection is at this vampire connector old scotch lock looking unit so once we have that our relay we can put in the relay will work but this honestly at the end of the day this needs to be fused it, it kind of is right now with the with the orange fuse link wire i think the white fuse link needs to come off and go to the red so let me figure this out and show you but i just wanted to show you what i found just kind of looking and checking things out you know some of this other stuff's going to need to be fixed too i don't know what it runs but it needs to be fixed <laughs> we know that much try not to beat this here to death folks so the orange fuse link that came out and goes back to this heavy orange wire and then comes up to this or the red wire and then up to the other red wire which feeds relays uh nobody carries fuse link wire anymore <laughs> 
I would have to I would have to look this up. I can't remember I can't remember how it goes uh, with fuse link wire. I think it's two or three gauges higher than the wire that it's hooking to. I do believe it's manufacturer specific, you know, which as far as color code. But what we're gonna do is we know the orange fuse link went to this 10 gauge red wire that goes to the ignition switch supposedly. So I added another length of 10 gauge red wire. Uh, I soldered that on there and I also soldered on a fuse holder because where it went to from the orange fuse link to the red 10 gauge wire, it came out with a white fuse link, which I believe is a higher gauge than this and then went to this wire. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna hook our, our red 10 gauge back to the orange fuse link. So this fuse link will still be viable to protect that circuit. And then where the white fusible link went, we're gonna add a regular welcome to the modern day, you know, era fuse. Instead of the white fusible link, we're adding just a fused circuit, which we will run back uh, to this red wire. We'll likely put a 10 amp uh, fuse in it. We'll check the current draw. I don't think we're going to need more than uh, 10 amps of protection. We just want to protect it from a dead short um, and that's it. So that's that's how we're going to fix this. I've already soldered, heat shrinked, and then I put tape over top of our heat shrink down here where this all came together. So we're going to pull this back, give ourselves a little extra. We'll take out our cutters. But that's how fusible link works. It's the unless somebody can give it a better explanation than me, it's the it's the weak link in the circuit. And if I and like I say, I would if I remember correctly, it's always smaller than the wire that it's actually hooking to or the circuit it's protecting. And I, I believe that's part of its being the weak link, if you will. But you could look it up yourself. The best thing to do with fusible link, this one's toast. is eliminate them. Fusible links are a pain on old vehicles. I believe this one is junk because the inside just falling apart. Usually they'll blow right in half. No, that one's still stout. Get to the strong section of it. There's not much of it there. I, there's a certain length you can't go over to. I don't know if it's six or eight inches. Somewhere in there if I remember right. Oh, it's frustrating. Get some heat shrink. Solder those. We're going to heat shrink it together just like the factory. Fusible link's pretty short, but it still should serve its purpose to protect the circuit. Now, theoretically, We should have power on half of this fuse. There's no fuse in it right now. This side should be hot though. And it is. And there's no fuse in it, so we don't have to worry about that. I didn't show the soldering process because I don't feel like reading the comments. Rest assured it was done incorrectly with some 60-40 rosin core solder. Uh, so I'm gonna let that solidify before we figure out too much. I'm gonna go get us a 10 amp fuse. We're gonna stick it in here. We're gonna wire up our relay and then hopefully the fuel pump is still broken and then we'll figure out what's up with that and then ultimately i'm going to have to come back and fix some of this we're going to take out some of this rigging up down here we're going to fix this wire before it becomes a problem the one that's all split open hopefully get this girl semi-reliable truck all right on there we go Knew we were right on the verge of not being able to get inside of a blue one. We'll crimp that. Put one in there. We'll crimp that one. let that solidify and then then we should have power here uh, 
Uh, test light, test light. Okay, we have power there, which that should be full-time power. It appears that it is. What's interesting to me is that there, there is current flowing through that wire right now. When I put that in there, there was a, a little bit of a spark. Um, which I think is kind of weird because I'm pretty sure the key's off. Yes, the key is off. Huh. I, wanna, I wonder how much current's flowing through that right now. I'd have to double check our diagram, but I wouldn't think there should be any. So let's see, let's take our fuse out. Let's see what we have for current. According to our meter, none, unless I have my leads hooked up wrong. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's right. So oh, I just was curious. I thought, I swear I saw a spark come from that fuse when I put it in. Our test light should be around a half an amp. Yeah, uh, 0.360 out of our test light. So yeah, there's no, dude, I swear when I plugged that in, I saw a little spark. And we know that our meter is working, so when, okay, maybe I'm crazy, <laughs> but I'm 99% certain I saw a little spark when I stuck that fuse in there, indicating that there is some sort of current flow across Dude, I, I know what I saw. Well, whatever. <laughs> we'll stick the 10 amper in there for the time being. We're gonna measure the current on this circuit when it's up and fully functional, all the injectors and coils and everything, everything going. Um, let's get this relay wired in here. I'm gonna do what I did on the last one. I'm gonna write down our wire colors, uh, which wire colors uh, correspond to these wire colors and we'll get this wired up oh this is the uh, AC cut relay the wide open throttle cut relay somebody wired this in <laughs> AC probably doesn't even work but they put a relay on it so and all that does is cut the AC relay at wide open throttle uh, or cuts the AC clutch out at wide open throttle so uh, it seems it's kind of unnecessary I doubt the AC works so let me get this labeled. I think we're gonna end up replacing uh, the ASD relay too, just because it's so dang crusty up in there. Keys off, Vanessa. Yeah. I don't need to push it away. Turn it on. Oh, frig me. So you heard it work, but you also probably heard the fuel pump kick on. Shut the key off. Key on. Ah, crap. Should key off. This should light up now anyways. Key on. Well, that's good, but it sucks. <laughs> you guys remember in the beginning here, that fuel pump did not work. We ran power directly to it. You could shut the key off and come out, Vanessa. We ran power directly to the fuel pump and it did not it did not work. I remember doing it with a jumper wire right here to the black with green. And now all of a sudden that kicks on. And we've been fiddling a lot. We've been moving a lot of stuff because we had to. Um, which I guess tells us a couple things. Well, hey, Vanessa, you still there? Yeah. Is this black with green? I don't think so. Hop in there, will you? I don't know what this is. Hippin' and a hoppin'. No, that's not the right colors. Just a minute, old girl. So, what we probably did, folks, um, I, I am positive without looking back through our footage that we ran power. I think that's why we got our jumped fuse. We ran power right to it. Nothing was happening. I don't know if these connectors. Well, I'm going to have to figure it out. I do see a black with green wire right here. 
and that goes into this connector. I don't know if this connector is getting crappy. I don't even know if that's the correct wire. That This one's black with green. What we'll do, because it does come out of this section of harness, to see if that is the fuel pump. Oh man, I thought I had some green crusties. I was like, oh, hallelujah. But uh, to see if that's a fuel pump, we'll throw an amp clamp around it. In the meantime, you can come out, Vanessa. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna heat shrink these down uh, to finish this termination here. Uh, we'll get this set to the side. I'll put my new label on. I just labeled this, you know, fuel pump ASD, so somebody can see that. I label this one start. I will label this one fuel pump, and then I'm going to call down to Napa get another uh, wiring harness and another uh, accessory relay. We're going to get rid of the green corrosion on this auto shutdown before this thing becomes, you know, major problem. I'm not going to bother trying to clean up these terminals and stuff. We'll just chop it off and put on you know three fresh relays we're going to spritz these down with some fluid film i'm just going to stick them up on the fender where they were get rid of these ones <clears throat> and we're going to keep calm and carry on the thing that really is bothering me right now is the fact that the fuel pump works um, that's really sucky because you guys know exactly what's going to happen i'm not worried about being embarrassed it's just it's gonna kinda have to suck to, if this thing doesn't quit and we can't find out where, if we don't see the problem visually, you know, I'm gonna try doing some, some wiggling and whatnot uh, once we uh, once we get the relay and, and I'm gonna kind of take throw some tape around this like I did with the other two. We're just gonna kinda leave them sitting for the time being and then we're gonna see if this wire is the fuel pump. If it is, we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to break it again because I would really like to just be one and done and, Robert, your mother's brother. So here's where we're at, folks. Uh, been a bit of a long day back on this thing. Uh, I ended up going full redneck on the battery for right now, as you can tell, with the classic ratchet strap. Had an old ratchet strap kicking around, so I just trimmed it up, threw it on the battery. This battery tray is just flat. There's no evidence of ever having used a J-bolt. I, I assume whatever held it on is probably rusted off. Uh, so that'll work uh, for the time being. I soldered on a couple new uh, battery terminals, a plus and a minus. No, I did not use heat shrink. I just soldered them on, charged the battery, wrap tape on them. Kind of just sticking things up out of the way. I taped up the harness here. I left the pigtails long on these relays. I left, well, these are the wires running up to the visor. I think we talked about that. At least I assume they are. They go down to the marker light. I left all of the fusible links exposed, as you should, um, including our fuse that we put on here. So I left them out in the open, kind of taped everything else up, did a visual inspection on that black with a uh, green stripe or green with black, whichever it was for the fuel pump. I didn't notice anything running back through there. Uh, this relay here that was empty is your part throttle unlock relay. I don't know if it's applicable to this truck I took that old auto shutdown relay, popped it apart, and there was no corrosion inside. It was just corroded on terminals. So I cleaned it up, stuck it in here. These terminals were all clean. I had power where I was supposed to, key on, engine running, uh, all that. So I just stuck it in there. But like I said, I don't know if it's applicable to this transmission. Um, and then this relay here, I'm just going to verify if it is wired correctly. If it is, we're just going to leave it because it's the uh, full throttle. Uh, wide open throttle unlock solenoid for the AC, which I doubt the AC even works. So there's no sense, even though it looks out of place, uh, no sense in really making a mountain out of a molehill when it comes to that. Uh, I guess what we can do now, I just put this in. I haven't greased the terminals or anything yet. Let's just see, you guys are in a safe place. Let's see if she starts now.
Hey, look at that. It just quit. I just gave her a couple rev up tune ups. Let me get Mrs. O out here and we'll see if our fuel pump just died. That would be great if it did. So the reason it quit, we never checked to see what the current draw was on our fuel pump ASD circuit. I probably should have thought a little better. Uh, 10 amps is definitely not sufficient. Because think about it, the fuel pump on this thing is probably drawn four to five. Ignition coils drawn a couple. We got injectors that run off this. There's a lot that runs off the ASD circuit. I'm gonna put a 20 amper in here. This should bring it back to life, but we're gonna throw a current clamp around it, see what it is. I wanna be a little bit over the, the running current. And then we're gonna check this one again, so. I'm running out of steam, Miss, though. Mm -hmm. How you like my battery hold down all of a sudden? Huh? <laughs> Full redneck. Oh, yeah, I trimmed it, burned the end even, huh? Wow. We're not scumbags. <laughs> it was just, there was nothing holding this battery in. It's really? a flat tray. Nope. Wow. I've got our current clamp, folks. I've got her up on a 20 amp scale. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to hear this when it's running, so I'll explain to you what we're doing. We're going to clamp around this little guy with it running. We're going to see what the total current draw is on this engine. It obviously didn't like the quick throttle snap I gave it. So I'll give it some throttle snap, see what the current goes up to, see if we're protected by a 20 amp fuse. Remember, this is the one that ran off from the white fusible link. If it had a white fusible link, that's what would be there. Uh, without having OEM service data, I'd have to do some digging. Maybe we could poke online and see what the amperage rating was for the white fusible link on Chrysler's. Uh, that's a little bit before my time. Uh, go ahead and start it, Vanessa. Chevy Thunder. <laughs> Dodge Thunder. So the maximum amperage we hit is 20. Probably would be a wise bet to put a 25 amp fuse, just be slightly over the rating. Uh, really the, the current draw shouldn't get any higher on that unless an injector shorts or a, the ignition coil shorts or you know any of the wiring shorts. We're still protected at 25 amps. Um, we're heavier than the We'll just have to look at the, see, I'll see what size wire that is just to make sure that we're, we're still good in that regards. Um, let me see what the charging output is on this thing. Uh, just to see. But I think we're, we're, st we're heading in the right direction here. Um, maybe I'll do some research to see what that white, uh, you know what I mean, fusible link was. I'm going to check a couple other things, folks, here, but just wanted to stop here for a second, touch base with you, let you know where we're at, what we're doing. This is way outside of my wheelhouse. All right, we go ahead and start it, Vanessa. Just wanted to make sure that it was charging okay because this battery was was low um i do know that the girl said that it was having you know charging problems it was overcharging you know running at like 16 17 volts something like that uh but with all that voltage drop you know it was in in this connection on the alternator 
uh, you know, the crappy terminal. It's it's hard to say. I don't know. I didn't look into it too heavy. I figured we'd kind of get stuff straightened out and then and then look into it. But it seems that the charging voltage is okay. I'm gonna do a little research on this. Make sure that we're gonna be okay jumping to 25 amps on that. I think we will be. I'm gonna double check the wiring on this. And if it's okay, we'll just kind of we'll tape it up and label it. And I think we're just about done, folks. You ain't gonna hate me, are you, Mrs. O? No. Okay. This girl ain't gonna hate me. Right? Right. She's gonna be happy. Happy she gets to drive her non-hemi Dodge Ram. Uh, let's see. The video's gonna suck. What are you doing with that thing? You just leaving it like that? What's that? This? No. I gotta look to see if it's wired right and then we're just gonna tape it up because it's kind of irrelevant. It's just a air conditioning cut relay. And I'm thinking the AC ain't working on this old girl. What? Oh, is this just me? Yeah, I had this Oh, you have it yeah, off? I had I'm like, off. I don't understand. Yeah, it's off a Pontiac. <laughs> That's what it says anyways. Pontiac. Hmm. <laughs> she had this, because me and Josh had to spray some brake parts cleaned in there to get the truck inside. So, and then it caught on fire on us. Uh, it was pretty epic. Did you get that on camera? No, I didn't, because I was riding under the hood. Oh, and I had okay. to yell at Josh, crank it, what, crank it? You see him catch on fire, just start cranking. Sucks the fire down the throttle. Uh -huh. But Josh, he ain't old enough to know some of these things. Uh -huh. Huh? He says, I'm like, crank it, man, it's on fire. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we'll tighten that up. All right. So what's up, Miss Oh, you want to come out and talk to us? Yeah. What'd you come out to talk to us about? Look at my mess. I don't even know what happened over here. I'm pretty sure the video's not gonna go together good because I didn't record. 90% of what I did. Hmm. Um, and then one time I was recording when I wasn't supposed to be, so that typically means I didn't record something I should have. <laughs> that happens, that has ruined more videos than... Me? No, you've never ruined a video. <laughs> so, what was wrong with it? Oh, I gotta go out and look at that Toyota. Hold your thought, Miss, I'll be right back. There, so there we go, that situation. The people really liked your video the other day where you were holding the camera. Oh, did they like my enhancing? Oh yeah, they liked everything. <laughs> they, they was probably my most popular video ever. Not, <laughs> not in views, but in comments. They were like, oh wow, you should really have a camera lady. Oh. You. Uh-huh. That's what they liked. Because I get the views? Apparently. That they want to see? Apparently, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, they thought that was great. Huh. Um, Interesting. So what was wrong with it? What did you do? Everything. Everything was I'm wrong. not going to explain it all because it's probably all they've heard because every time I kick it on, I think I just repeat myself. <laughs> Anyhow, I so. think. So the only problem that we have now is that the fuel pump still may conk out again, but we don't know why. So we're going to look inside this connector. Let's do that right now. Because there might be well, a it, problem between here and there? Yep, because we know for a fact that we put power to it. And I think I even verified it with Tesla that our test, our test lead was good, but we didn't hear the fuel pump running and all of a sudden it started working. So let's turn the camera and have a look in here. Let so me hold the camera. If you want to. <laughs> that on. Are you recording me? That's what you told me to do. Well, not all the time. I need that one. Let me see who's calling. Yep. Gotta wear my glasses a little more. I see that. You know why? Because you can't see without them. I'm running out of arm. <laughs> That's why. Uh, so this AC cut relay is wired in properly, actually. Believe it or not. It's just kind of. You need your glasses. No, I can feel. This. Uh huh. Uh huh. I don't know why somebody put a brand new relay on this. That's kind of weird. Maybe they thought it was something else. You know, right. may, maybe they thought it was a fuel pump or something. Hmm. Or one of the other important relays. It's probably the least important of all of them. So and they use crimp and seal connectors on it. So that's good. Mm -hmm. That's one good thing I can say. 
They've had a lot of good things to say today. I haven't been in to see it much either. Busy. Who? You? You. Yeah, it's been kind of busy today. What? It's been kind of busy. You should have seen it yesterday, man. <laughs> Don't abandon me on Mondays. Well, you... But see my look on my face? Just... <laughs> That's a disappointment. Do you know what time of day it was when I brought in my first car? You're not supposed to schedule anything when I'm not here. There was nothing scheduled for me. Well then, I don't understand why did it matter. When Why did you have a car if nothing was scheduled? Because when there's nothing scheduled for me, I still have a parking lot full of crap I need to do. But you can do them when I come back. No, because then I've got all that crap plus today's crap. See, crap compounds. It's a <laughs> mathematical equation. There's crap. And daily, it comp it's complicated. Hmm. I try not to schedule anything for me and just for Mr. Josh when you're not here. We need to label this. With a green our, tape? With our relay labeling tape. We had a uh, writing apparatus. Here it is. We'll just label this. I know this, this looks like a bit of a mess over here, folks. All the wearing, but. It ain't a show truck. Ain't no, man. not yet. No, it's not a show truck. This it could be someday. So we want to pour like hundreds of hours into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like see the frame's pretty solid on his truck bodies. Leave something to be desired, but let's see, we'll label this AC cut. AC cut. What do you mean cut? It's not like cut out? AC cut relay, yeah. Wide open throttle cut relay. That's what they call it. I don't know what they call it here. AC cutout relay. So, or a wide open throttle cut relay. Hmm. So when you're out there and you're giving her full beans, you got the pedal to the metal, because this is actually metal. It's a pedal to your plastic. Mm -hmm. The AC shuts off. Just like your car. Your car does the same thing. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. We gotta find some place to put this. <laughs> we'll just zip tie it someplace where it looks natural. Yeah, yeah, your car's cut out AC at full throttle. That way you got maximum power. You know what I mean? Don't follow me around. You're embarrassing me. What? <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> what do you want us to do? Just stare at nothing? Yeah, let me do. You know, a lot of my viewers say that now. What do you want me to do, chop it off? <laughs> Can I tell them about that? Do you know that? Oh, I can only imagine. You should hear the things I tell well, them when you're not around. Exactly. Well, that's fine. It's not going anywhere. So nothing's going anywhere. So. The battery isn't anywhere. The battery ain't going nowhere. So. Straight redneck. I told them it's only temporary. Temporary until it's until it works. <laughs> it's only temporary until it works. Um, I guess that's it, folks. It, it starts and runs and, and drives. I'm gonna take it for a rip. I should leave my cell phone here. That way, it guarantees it'll quit. <laughs> right, Mister? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I guess if it does quit, well, ultimately we get to come back and find out about this fuel pump. I'll bring you back along. But until then. I'm just gonna drive it. I might even drive it home tonight just to make myself feel a little better and go from there. So while I'm doing that, why don't you guys go down there in that comment section. Questions, comments, concerns. Find us on the Insta, the Facebook. It's so weird when you're holding it, Mrs. though. I'm just being honest with you. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. You should be comfortable with me. You're naked in front of me all the time. They don't need to know that.